Hello, beautiful friends. I'm so excited about this. Well, I'm always, as you know, excited about watercolors, but I thought this was so cute. Look at the little bunny, his little feet, um, and his little hands right here, his little paws, his little ears, and he's hugging this uh, adorable little egg, of course, with florals on it, because that's my jam. And I thought, oh my gosh, I got to share this with you guys. So this is one of my cards. I actually have the card taped down, but the card I'm using is these um, watercolor Strathmore cards. I'll find my link for you and I'll, I'll share that. I have been using these for years and years and years. Um, I really like them. What's kind of cool about them, well, number one, they're uh, watercolor paper. They're not, you know amazing but they do really well and um the thing i really like about them is let me just grab it i should have had one out is look at how beautiful the um envelopes are they come in one second i make all my own cards so okay here's the envelope i make all my own cards for the most part um, but look at this beautiful little edge isn't that pretty? And I have painted on the front of these, although um, you got to be really careful. I, I wouldn't recommend that because it can warp a little, but I just use hardly any water and I will do little splatters or little flowers and it's really fun. Everybody loves getting my cards. Just it it's not even about that I'm some amazing artist. It's they just like getting handmade things and I'm kind of old fashioned that way. So I like that. As far as my um, supplies I'm gonna use today, you know, this Degato brush, so fabulous for beginner students. You get a whole set of these Degatos of rounds and uh, they're, I think, $15. And so snappy, love the Degatos. But today I'm going to be using, I've got my uh, standard eight Princeton Round Velvet Touch, and then I always, it's sidekick here is the six long round Princeton Velvet Touch, just because there are some little smaller areas that I might want to touch into. So I've got those, not going to use my Degatos today, and of course my beautiful My Lane palette. Um, you know, maybe one day I can afford to paint with my Winsor Newtons every day, but for now I can't. And Paul Rubin, although I buy all these palettes, they've been so fabulous, you guys. I just can't say enough about them. And let me show you something. Um, they did gift me this beautiful, this is their brand new palette. It's the fifth generation and it's the Yulon uh, 24 colors but look at how fun the box is. I don't even know if these are available on Amazon yet. I love their packaging. Look at this fabulous packaging. That just, that always means a lot to me. I didn't plan on showing you these, but here I am. They always come with this ring, which I really like because I do paint plein air and those are handy. And then look at the fabulous colors. Actually, what I might do is feel free to use your My Lang. I think I'm going to use these today. Let's just see how these do. Um, so let me just activate them. I'm going to give them a little squirt here of water. Just a tiny bit. I have a um, dropper coming. So I can do this a little bit easier. And you know what, you guys? I think today I might even play with these my metallics, my MAB metallics, that might be fun too. So got all kinds of stuff going on. I'm hanging my, uh, this isn't the best shirt to paint with. Let me pull up my sleeves. I'm uh, getting my lace in everything. So I think the colors today I will use will be their, oh, let's see. Probably these reds here, I think will be really pretty. Okay, big surprise there, right? Because that's the color I always use. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to go in wet on wet and I'm going to paint around all these little flowers and things. Um, you could use masking. Um, 
I'm not a big masking fan, so I'm not going to use it, but you definitely could. So let's go around. I'm just going to, and I might do this in sections, so I'm very carefully painting around all these fun little flowers. And then the trick here, if you're going to work in sections, is bring your paint, don't bring your paint all the way to the edge of where you put water. And that way you won't have this hard line and you can just start from wherever you stop painting. But if you bring your paint all the way to the hard line, it's a little bit harder to just continue from that area when you want to paint another little section because you're going to have that hard line there. Okay, so while that's doing that, I'm going to go into, I think I want to use, let's see, let's try this color, see what color that is. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty. Maybe a little bit of that. Ooh, very pretty. Purple is always very potent, you guys. Very pretty. Ooh, look at that purple. So I mixed a little of both. So before this dries, I'm going to go in there. Ooh, yeah, exactly what I was looking for. So now notice my paint is only going where my water is. And I'm not bringing my paint all the way to the edge, except for where I know I'm not going to continue and this is where this little six Princeton brush comes in so handy because it's got that tiny point. So I'm holding my brush upright and just going around all of this. <clears throat> so notice the soft line I've got here because I didn't go all the way to the end. Here too. I did go around these. So that way when I keep painting, it's going to blend a little bit better. So let's just keep going. I'm going to get some clean water. And you can use a little bit more water here than I'm normally telling you to. because we want to get a lot of movement in the paint. We want it to look very washy. Now that's just dropping in some plain water like we did on our background the other day with the little birdie. And then I'm extending my water line just a little bit farther than I know I'm going to use paint. So we could even add in maybe some purple like that just to give it a little different color. And then what I like to do is I'm going to blow on it or you could add some water. But I really like blowing because it's such a pretty effect. Look how beautiful, you guys. Ugh. As always, I, you know, I know I'm a broken record, you guys, but just watercolors is so amazing. It's like it tells me every morning, pick up your brush. We got some things we want to do. We got some magic that's waiting to happen. And I pick up my brush and it just shows me something else wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and finish going around all these little areas. And this is where, again, that little brush tip on this six is so, does so well. And I don't care if I'm getting some blooms and things here, because honestly, I kind of like that. So there you go. Now let me start adding in some of my paint, pick it up on my palette here. I want some more of that rose color, which is gorgeous. 
and it's just flowing into wherever I left water. Now I could pick this up and get it to move a bit. And again, you can always just use mastic if you're a mastic fan and this is just a little too tedious for you. Perfectly okay, do what kind of suits you. I don't know why I never have a lot of luck with mastic. I feel like it ends up ripping my paper and doing all kinds of stuff. So look at this beautiful look we got going here. Now I'm gonna go around and just clean up a few of these little edges. Make sure we're completely filled in. Forgot that little edge. Just using really light pressure. And there we go, I think that's pretty good. Isn't that gorgeous? Ah, oh, just love that color. Paul Rubens, you do so well with your colors, love them. I'm just dropping in some so I kind of get this fun, almost looks like a dyed egg look, right? And if you don't like how it's spreading, just give it a little help and blow on it or whatever works for you. I'm gonna give this a little blow. There we go. All right, so we are done with that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a quick shot of, so I've got some blooms there, which I actually, I could drop in a little water. Oh, now I picked up my, my eight round, which is fine and just get that to blend a bit. There we go. Kind of gets that fun tie-dye effect. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot with my little heat gun here. These are pretty inexpensive, but you know what? Honestly, you guys, you can just use a blow dryer. So let's give this a shot here and get it to dry. Isn't it cute already? I'm gonna make this little ears. Whoever gets this card, I'll probably end up making a couple of them. I think it's going to be really happy to have it. And I just, I love getting cards. A few of you, I think I've got three cards here that a few of you have sent me, and I love them. I love that you took the time to make them for me, and I love that you took the time to kind of snail mail it to me. Okay, so I can tell it's getting dry because, number one, look how watercolors lighten up. So that's what's going on there. And my paper has flattened out. So that tells me that it's dry. All right, loving these um, Paul Rubens uh, colors. Beautiful, very happy with those. Look at these vibrant yellows they've got and oranges. And I love the Paul Rubens because they're similar to those My Langs where they just are so vibrant but yet they have this beautiful translucency to them. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go in and start painting in, since this is dry, using my six brush. Let's just go into the center of our flower here. I'm just gonna use their little palette they give here. And let's mix a little bit of the yellow with that. There we go, look at how bright their colors are. Oh my gosh, I love them. And this is a brand new palette they came out with. Um, okay, let's see here. So I'm gonna go in and just draw in the center. And now I intentionally chose, am choosing this yellow color because it is a complementary color to purple. So I thought that would be really pretty. I'm just coloring in all the little centers, and I had left some little dots here, which we'll go in and do those. So I'm keeping this kind of simple. 
And then I think for the petals, I'm going to go in with maybe some more of that orange yellow. Oop, there we go. And let's just fill that in. So using the tip of my brush, I'm even leaving some little bit of white space. And coloring those in, coloring, haha, <laughs> painting those. I might even tap into some of that yellow and get that in there. Let's do this one here. I think actually I'll go do this one. And I'm even gonna tap into the center here with some of that orange. I think that's kind of pretty. There we go. This little six brush is really great. I love it. Um, let's get a little bit more of that orange. So cute, you guys. I hope you'll give this a try. I think it's so fun. And look how beautiful these colors go together. That is the perfect example of contrasting colors or opposite on your color wheel, how beautiful they can be together. Very spring timey. And bright and happy. And then let's do this little guy up here. I pulled in a little bit more yellow. Of course, you can do whatever colors you want your flowers to be but I do kind of recommend going for that pop. There we go. I laid down yellow, but I think I'll add in a tiny bit of orange just to give it some interest. There we go. Oh, love. This again is that beautiful quality of watercolors is you can go in and add in colors and they just mix so wonderfully. There we go. I think what I'll do with those little, uh, these little dots is let's try a green. Let's see, do we want that, a green? I think so. So I'm gonna go into there, that's a little bit too much. Let me get some of that off. And there we go. Just some little green dots. And again, that green is, I think, really pretty with the um, purple. So let's Go ahead and do this flower. I think I'll do that one in a little bit more yellow. Adding a little bit of water. So I'm about a 50-50 mix. And I'm going to dab in some of that orange just to get a fun little blend there. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And then let's go into that orange and tap in. Let that blend, flow together. This is those instances where I just put it in there and let the watercolors do their thing. You could almost, you know what we could almost do is maybe once those centers dry, I'll go in there and make those dark purple. That might be fun. Okay, for his little ears, I'm going to go into their brown. Let's see, which brown do I want to do? I'm looking at their card here. I think I'm going to go into this brown here. And I might just add a tiny bit to darken it up a little bit. Not too much. So I like that color and I'm going to add more water to it. And then let's start on his little bunny ears. I'm also going to 
rinse my brush and it's kind of a thirsty brush now and just rinse my brush again. There we go. Let's bring this down here. Just paint in. Making the outer edge of his ear a little bit lighter so it looks like it's hitting the light. Pick up some of that darker color. I'm really liking these, these Paul Rubens. I think they're gorgeous. So it kind of looks like that's inside. Now that's gonna dry lighter, so I'm not really worried about how dark it looks right now. And then let's go into the inner part and do that pink. Just a tiny bit, kind of reminds me of the uh, rose red that I love so much. Now that looks really bright, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse my brush and go in with water. And I don't even care if it blends a little bit with the brown, that's totally fine. Let's just tap in, because I like the look when it's not just perfectly flat, a flat wash. There we go wash rinse my brush I might just pick up a little there we go and let's do his other ear so I've already got my paint here do the same thing I'm laying down the color and then I'm gonna go back in wow this color really is gorgeous you guys their paints are just such quality. I can feel it when I'm laying it down. It just goes right onto the paper so beautifully. That is nice. Really a nice coverage, love it. I'm gonna darken up that side. So what I'm noticing is just how vibrant this paint is. I mean, that was so easy to get that. I'm gonna go just barely with the tip of my brush along that edge. So it's kind of pulling it over to the side a bit and then along that edge with a damp brush. There we go. So it almost looks like it's kind of turning. Go along it with a damp brush, get a little bit of softening. Okay, that's good. Let's go into that one, just like we did here. I'm gonna lighten up, so I just rinsed my brush a bit. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And then darken up this edge here. There we go, look how fun, you guys. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's adorable. Okay, I feel like I wanna make his little paws. Maybe we should use the brown again. So let's pick up a little bit more of that brown. And go in. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that because I want it to be kind of washy. I don't like ever just having a completely solid color, just not my thing. So I'm gonna go in and just dampen, touched into the edge. So it looks like his little paw is curling over. Like that, rinse my brush. Maybe I could even use my push-pull technique. So the edge of his little paw is definitely darker. Like that. And then as it wraps around, it's a little lighter. I could even lift a tiny bit. Like that. 
And then let's do his little legs. I'm gonna actually do, get this damp first. So no puddle, just a shine. And let's fill that in with some more of that brown. I always like the wet on wet technique. I just think it's so a beautiful sign of watercolors. Now see, I have a little bit of bloom on his ear there. So I'm going in with a damp brush and just gonna smooth that out a tiny bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's do his other little leg here. So I'm putting a wash, no puddles, just shine. And then I'm gonna go in with my brown, just touch in and let it do its thing. I, I just love that look. And maybe right here, his little leg. I used my pencil a little bit heavier than I might normally because I wanted you to see the lines. And I think in here underneath, I might just darken that up a bit with a little bit more of a dark brown, just so it looks shadowed. And I'll give you this drawing if you like. I'll redraw it. I should have taken a picture of it. Just adding some shadows there with a little bit of the darker brown. But look at how much fun that, that creates when I even just add in those tiny touches. I think it makes, I'm just lifting a little bit of that and then maybe even go into those areas with some darker brown. So along this edge, along this edge, there we go. Just a little more darkness in there. Sometimes it's these tiny little details that seem like, oh, is that really necessary? but they really can make a difference. And what I find is when I add in those little details, sometimes it just makes it so interesting. I'm noticing I forgot to paint the other ear there. So let's, let's get it wet first, just because that's my, really my go-to when I paint is I love the wet and wet. So just a tiny bit of that pink because it's pretty intense. There we go. I left a little bit of white space in there. Okay. Just like that, kind of at the base. And then I'm going to wet that, just kind of soften it up. So I just use a, I use a damp brush a lot, you guys, just to soften lines and things. And then let's do his little tootsies. Um, I think I'll do that a little lighter brown, so maybe even a pinky brown. Let's see what we can get with that. Let's mix some brown with some of that pink, see what we get. So going in, and I'm gonna really water that down. So I'm going around his little, my daughter, my niece calls these her cat's beans, his little tootsies. And I want it to be a tiny bit 
browner. So I'm gonna add in, mix up that brown color again. And just add in some touches here and there and let that kind of spread around. And then once that dries, I'm gonna make his little, as my niece calls it, beans. I think that's so cute. I never knew what she was talking about for the longest time. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with that color on this one. Kinda of didn't like that pink color so much. It just seemed too far from the rest of his foot color. Now, again, you could use that gua, not gouache, uh, mastic here. All right, and then let's let that dry. What I'll do is let's go in with a really bright purple and maybe color in the centers. So I'm gonna grab that original purple, grab that pink. There we go. Ooh almost dropped my brush and let's go in and see what that does. Yeah, I kind of like that. There we go. So I just used the version of the egg color, but I put it in the center here. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. You could stick, stick with the yellow either way whatever kind of feels right for you. Now, the one thing I'm not liking is that green is just kind of all by itself. So what I might, oh, oh, what I might do is just, let's see if I can lift that up. What I might do is just add some little green grass. Let's see if I can lift that up. Uh, need a piece of toilet paper, gotta work fast because you wanna try and get it while it's wet. So there we go. I was able to lift that little oopsie up. Yay. Okay, so I think I will use some of that green just because it kind of looks like, what the heck? That green, that's the only green there is. So I think I'll go in and just add some of that green. Let's mix up a little green with, make it a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna go in and just use the tip of my brush. And that way it isn't like, wow, that green kind of came out of nowhere, right? So just that little touch is gonna help. There we go. All right. Our little feet are almost dry, so I think I'll go in and just paint those that fun pink color we had here. There we go. I'm gonna try something too, by the way. Let's see what happens if I add a tiny bit of orange. Yeah, just not quite the right color I'm looking for. Uh, where's the pink? So let's grab our pink. I'm gonna make it very light. You can't even see what I'm grabbing there. Add some water to it. And this will ooh, match his little ears up above. And then his little pink tootsies. I wanted this to be very light pink. So I used mostly water um, versus the paint. And I think I'm pretty much done. You could add some little orange flowers in here if we wanted to kind of blend in these orange flowers in here. You definitely could do that just using the tip of my brush, my hands anchored here. And I think that's kind of pretty. You could splatter here as well, but you would want to cover your egg probably. Don't have to. This might be a fun kids project too. There we go. 
Okay. Now what I did want to do, thank you, Paul Rubens. I love that paint. Is I want to go in and add a tiny bit of these metallics. Let's see. I think this is the one I really like, or maybe this one. I should have pre-wet these guys. That's always best. I'm now I'm trying to use the side of my brush so I'm not drilling a hole. There we go. And let's maybe add a little shine and shimmer to the inside of his ears. Ooh, look at that. How fun is that? I hope you can see that. Let's see, let me take the tape off and I'll hold it up so you can see. Let's see. So whenever you remove your tape, I always pull as flat as I can. It just seems to come off better without ripping up my paper. So there we go. Let's do that. Okay. I just wanna be able to hold this up so you can see those shimmers. It might even be pretty in this purple to add some of that shimmer, but look how cute this, oh my gosh, you guys, this card is so cute. And I, I never say that like, oh, I'm such a great artist, look how cute. I just think watercolors are beautiful. I think you could paint something simple like this, a little egg, and look at how cute that is. So there we go. So I added a touch of that silver. Let me grab that. And we could even add in some of that and pick up a little bit more of that. And by the way, this is the MAB Metallics Mirror Series. I love these. Never can get enough of these. This is my second set. I use the first set so much. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of shine because our bunny needs some shine, right? To his ears and toes. You could add it into your little flowers. But look at that. So fun, you guys. Sometimes it's those little touches. And I think I'm done. So I hope you give it a try. This is so fun. And um, I will give you the drawing for this. I should have taken a picture of it before I painted it. I kind of forgot. Um, but I'll do that for you. And happy Easter. Happy spring. All right, everybody, most of all, have fun. Thank you so much for being a part of my little community here. Just, you guys make me so happy and so inspiring. And I even see you talking with among each other. And it's just, what a fabulous thing we've created here together. All right, I will see you all soon. Bye.